Gulf of Mexico oil spill full of methane, adding new concerns. It is an overlooked danger in the oil spill crisis or catastrophe. The crude oil gushing from the whale contains vast amounts of natural gas that could pose a serious threat to the Gulf of Mexico's fragile ecosystem. The oil coming from the seafloor contains about 40% methane compared with about 5% found in typical oil deposits, said John Kessler, a Texas A&M University oceanographer who is studying the impact of methane from the spill. So that means huge quantities of methane have entered into the Gulf, scientists say, potentially suffocating all marine life and creating dead zones where oxygen is so depleted that nothing lives. This is the most vigorous methane eruption in modern human history, Kessler said. And this is a definite sign. Revelation chapter 16 verse 3 And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. Methane is a colorless, odorless, and flammable substance that is a major component in the natural gas used to heat people's homes. Petroleum engineers typically burn off excess gas attached to crude before the oil is shipped off to the refinery. That's exactly what BP has done as it has captured more than 7.5 million gallons of crude oil from the breached whale. A BP spokesman said the company was burning approximately 30 million cubic feet of natural gas daily from the source of the leak, adding up to about 450 million cubic feet since the containment effort started 15 days ago. That's enough gas to heat some 450,000 homes for four days. And, they might add, methane is some 20 times more potent than CO2. What will that do to the atmosphere? Or the climate? And that figure does not account for gas that eluded containment efforts and wound up in the water, leaving behind huge amounts of methane. Meanwhile, signaling a shift in strategy to fight against BP's ruptured whale in the Gulf, the Coast Guard is ramping up efforts to capture oil closer to the shore. Admiral Thad Allen said on Friday an estimated 2,000 private boats in the so-called Vessels of Opportunity program will be more closely linked through a tighter command and control structure to direct them to locations less than 50 miles offshore to scam the oil. Allen, the point man for the federal response to the spill, previously had said surface containment efforts would be concentrated much farther offshore. Estimates of the oil being siphoned from the whale a mile below the gulf are still growing. Allen said more than 1.2 million gallons was contained on vessels Thursday. So devastated, Thursday was focused on Capitol Hill where lawmakers chastised BP CEO Tony Hayward during hearings into the spill. Testifying as the oil still surged into the gulf at between 1.47 million and 2 0.52 million gallons a day, coating more coastal land and marshes. Hayward declared, I am so devastated with this accident, deeply sorry, and so distraught. And this goes with Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 19. And will ye pollute me among my people, 
for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread or money to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Hayward also said he was out of loop on decisions at the well and disclaimed knowledge of any of the myriad problems on and under the deep water rising rig before the deadly explosion. BP was leasing the rig, the deep water horizon, that exploded April 20th, killing 11 workers and triggering this huge environmental disaster. As for the methane, scientists are still trying to measure out how much has escaped into the water and how it may damage the gulf and all its creatures. The dangerous gas has played an important role throughout the disaster and response. A bubble of methane is believed to have burst up from the seafloor and ignited the rig explosion. Methane crystals also clogged a four-story containment box that engineers earlier tried to place on top of the breached well. Now is being looked at as an environmental concern. Small microbes that live in the sea have been feeding on the oil and natural gas in the water and are consuming larger quantities of oxygen which they need to digest food. So as they draw more oxygen from the water it creates two problems. When oxygen levels drop low enough the breakdown of oil grinds to a halt and as it is depleted in the water most life can't be sustained. The National Science Foundation funded research on methane in the Gulf amid concerns about the deaths of the oil plume and questions what role natural gas is playing in keeping the oil below the surface. This has the potential to harm the ecosystem in ways that we just don't know. It's a very complex problem. In early June, a research team led by Samantha Joy of the Institute of Undersea Research and Technology at the University of Georgia investigated a 15 mile long plume drifting southwest from the leak site. They said they found methane concentrations up to 10,000 times higher than normal and oxygen levels depleted by 40% or more. A real dead zone scientists found that some parts of the plume had oxygen concentrations just shy of the level that tips ocean waters into the category of dead zone, a region uninhabitable to fish, crabs, shrimp, and all other marine creatures. Shallow waters are normally more susceptible to oxygen depletion because is being found in such deep waters. Joy does not know what is causing the depletion and what the impact could be in the long or short term. In an email she called her findings the most bizarre looking oxygen profiles I have ever seen anywhere. Again, the most bizarre looking oxygen profiles I have ever seen anywhere. anywhere. Representatives of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration acknowledged that so much methane in the water could draw down oxygen levels and slow the breakdown of oil in the Gulf. Yes, the question is, is what's going on in the deeper, colder parts of the ocean? Are the methane concentrations going to overcome the amount of available oxygen? We want to make sure we're not overloading the system. And yes, that is very possible. And again, Revelation chapter 8, verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became 
as blood. And all these or more signs 